Okay, you've been working at Murray State before the explosion. Um, about six years or so. Um, four years as an undergraduate student working the desk as a night worker. Um, I know that's about two and a half years actually. Uh, and then two full years as a residence director. Um, and then before I was in RD, I worked as a graduate assistant in the Office of Student Disability Services. Mm -hmm. So about about four and a half, five years actually. Most of the time I was at Murray. So. Mm -hmm. What degree did you receive from Murray State? Um, I have a bachelor's in human resources. Um, when I graduated December 2014, fall with that one. Uh, and then I got my master's in May of 2017 in post-secondary education. So. And you had your HR degree in what year? Uh, December 2014. And your master's in May of 2017. 2017. Okay. If you could just take a minute to walk me through your day on June 28th from the time that you got up. Okay. Um, when I woke up that morning, it's probably eight or ten. Um, it varied every morning. Um, but I got up. I did some errands that morning um, for being a part-time employee for the university. I had to do some exit counseling with HR and get some stuff signed, like by public safety, uh, something by the bursar's office, stuff like that. So I ran around, did everything that they required me to do. Um, come about noonish or so, I started packing up my car with some of the belongings I was going to take with me to my new job. Um, did that throughout the day, grabbed some lunch and uh, visited my girlfriend and her mom. We went out and about and they dropped me off back about four o'clock. Um, four o'clock or so I started loading up my car again. I moved it to where the spot was, my parking, one of my parking spots was. Uh, about 4.10, 4.15ish or so. I go to my apartment. Um, I laid down on my couch to take a nap. Um, but I couldn't get comfortable because I was getting a crick in my neck. Went to my bedroom, and next thing I know, I woke up in a helicopter. That's really the gist of that day. Not really anything outlandish or out of the ordinary, really. So, mm -hmm. except for the explosion. Except for the explosion. <laughs> yes, yes. That that was definitely out of the ordinary. <laughs> you don't expect that to happen every day. No, not at all. Where exactly were you when the explosion happened? I was in um, Richmond Hall in my apartment on the first floor. Um, I was in one of the two bedrooms that I norm that I claim as my primary bedroom. The other one was a guest bedroom. And what injuries did you sustain from the incident? Well, right now, we, we can't go into that right now. I will tell you he did receive significant injuries and that, that's still ongoing. Uh, an ongoing process to uncover all the injuries we sustained that day. So can you tell me anything about the current prognosis or any further treatment needed? Not today, we can't. Okay. Uh, we'll be glad to assist you uh, later down the road as, as more of those things come to light. Okay, thank you. How are you currently feeling? Uh -huh. Can you answer now for me? Can I answer that? You, you can. I mean, it, it, from the way you've described it to me, it's different on different nights. Yeah, every every day is different. Um, sometimes I feel a little better, but sometimes I don't. Um, as he said, we're still figuring out to the extent of my injury. Some days I feel better. Sometimes it, it recurs that I don't. It just varies every day. So. Are you seeking any kind of professional help to help you deal with the emotional trauma of that day? Today we can't answer that question either. Okay. Um, so, we had some reports that there were um, people who had smelt gas in the building before the explosion happened. Did you make that report or did you hear of any of these reports being made? No. Um, I had no idea there was any gas leaked into the building, no reports made, um, nothing. Um, from what I've read and seen, apparently that was made in the morning by a maintenance crew. Uh, I was not made aware of it. I didn't know it was a gas leak until after the explosion had happened. So You never smelled gas up until that point? No. Um, I don't know if whether it's because I got used to it or what, but I didn't smell anything that morning. Um, no one came into the building to let us know. Um, so there were painters and university employees leaving the building all day working on stuff, 
and unless they didn't smell anything to my knowledge either because they were pretty communicative with me they'd say hey whenever I walked in out of the building no one made me aware of the situation at all and so with that being said you had no idea that there were any issues with New Richmond no um, being the residence director of the building um, during the year, I'm normally the one who reports any facilities issues or anything along those lines. I was not aware at all, so... What was the university response to you after the explosion? Did Dr. Davies contact you or did they have any kind of communication with you? Okay, yeah, you can. Okay. And um, uh, to my knowledge, Murray State has been very helpful forthcoming I'm, I'm not privy to the information whether or not uh, Dr. Davies has contacted uh, Mr. Fields but I'll let him answer that. Um, in the hospital uh, I can't remember her name but one of the Board of Regents came and saw me um, I think her daughter was visiting or doing something in the Vanderbilt Hospital so she came and said hey and I uh, checked in on me uh, Dr. Davies did send me a message on Facebook uh, I've actually known Dr. Davies for a few years him and I he knows me by fir uh, first name uh, he messaged me, said to be strong and other encouraging things. Um, other than those two coming to see me and then um, Stephanie reaching out and showing me the videos before they were public, re publicly released, um, and then emails exchanged between Bo and I with other people, no. So Dr. Davies, the Board of Regents, and Stephanie are really the only ones that have really reached out. So. What personal property did you lose? Um, I can't answer that at the moment, but I have provided a list to Murray State University. Okay. So, um, your girlfriend told us that you lost your Bible and devotional and you let us use the picture mm -hmm. on our website. Have you been able to retrieve those belongings? Um, no, haven't. I, mean, I, don't, <clears throat> I haven't got those back and I don't think I'm probably ever going to get those back. We were lucky to get a journal that was destroyed in the explosion, uh, but I don't think I'm probably going to get that Bible back because um, there was an item that was seen on the ground that was mine and someone stole it because um, they saw it, um, but I don't think I'm going to get those back. No. Are you going to ask Murray State to locate it? <clears throat> um, or try to? I've thought about it, but at this point it's just a lost cause. Um, I've got a new Bible, it's got my, some of my, uh, my Bible replaced. Um, it would have been nice to have that back, but it's probably, probably torn to shreds now anyway, so I'm just going to leave it at that. So you said that just a few people reached out to you, but what has the support been like from fraternity brothers, from the community, from your residents living in New Richmond? It's definitely been a blessing to really see how much support I really have. Um, when I was in the hospital, uh, three fraternity brothers came and saw me. I know more wanted to, and uh, the chapter president tried to get uh, my, you know, my chapter at Murray said he had a list of people who wanted to see me, but I didn't have a phone, so I didn't see that message until long after. Uh, but a guy I went to high school with came and see me, who we were fraternity brothers. He was really very helpful. Um, our chapter director came and saw me. Um, he's been a blessing with uh, taking in all the mail and donations that people have sent me. Uh, and then our uh, national uh, executive director came and saw me. He's not the executive director anymore, but he's like the CEO of Sigma Pi. He came and saw me. He was really cool. Um, as of Murray support, uh, a lot of my friends reached out to me. Like, if I had a phone, it was literally just notification after notification. It was really nice to hear from everybody. Um, I've seen a few people this weekend, and last time I was here in town, um, the support from all my friends have been phenomenal. Um, my girlfriend's family has been very um, fortunate. They've not fortunate. They've been a blessing as well. Their support's been great. Um, overall, the support's been phenomenal. From Murray, uh, my friends, uh, New Richmond, all my residents that I was really close with and my, my staff, their support's been great. Um, but uh, overall, it's been good support. When was your last scheduled day at Murray State? Uh, uh, it was June 30th, wasn't it? Yes, uh, my last actual day, work day, was supposed to be June 30th. Um, Typically, the HR exit counseling you're supposed to do when you leave is supposed to be like as close as possible to your last day as possible. Um, but I, being an RD, I needed to keep my ID to get in the building. Uh, my parking tag I could give up, but some of the stuff I needed to keep doing the job until that Friday, I couldn't give them, um, like my ID and other things. Um, so that's why I had my exit counseling that morning, and my last official day was supposed to be that Friday. 
um, but never got there because of the explosion. So, mm -hmm. so your exit counseling was the morning of the explosion, yes. correct? Had you already committed to the new position at Western Illinois? Oh yeah. Um, other than loading up my car and getting on the road to go, I accepted the job back in like April. No, uh, I had a job offer in like March, but then I accepted it in late March, early April. So I have already was way committed to going, just had to get there first. Is there anything that you would like to say to your residents of Richmond? Uh, <laughs> I would say I like to say a lot of things, um, but I guess just be patient. Um, obviously, this is out of nowhere. No one could have known that this was going to happen. Um, but just be patient. I'm sure the university uh, is working very hard um, to get help them out in every way they can. Um, <laughs> uh, this, all I can say is be patient because um, it could have been a lot worse. Uh, it could have happened two months ago. It could have uh, went like two months ago before the accident when people were still in the building. It could have been because uh, normally GSP, the GSP girls are in that building, but they were all moved. All the GSP kids were moved to Franklin. I'm just saying, be patient and understanding because it could have been, <laughs> it could have been so much worse than what it really was. So. Mm -hmm. Have you been back? Yeah. Um, define back, I'm sorry. <laughs> Have you been back to New Richmond since you were released from the hospital at Vanderbilt? Um, three times. Um, and this weekend I saw it when I came back in the beginning of August, and then um, as I was being transported from Vanderbilt to uh, where I stayed for part of my recovery was uh, we drove by and saw it. Um, so I've seen it three times. Um, two times I was able to walk up to see it. The first time we just drove by. Um, but first time the gate was really, the, the, the first, uh, how do I say this? The quarantine area, I guess. The perimeter. The perimeter, yeah. It was really much bigger and now it's obviously smaller. So this past visit in August, the first of August, I was actually able to get really close and see it. Um, so it's rather surreal to finally see in person, so. I'm sure. Do you feel the university could have done anything to prevent the blast? Uh, I can't comment on that. I have no comment. Are you seeking any legal action, if you can tell us? I can't answer that at the moment. Has the university given you any insight on what happened to set off the explosion? Um, no. Were you aware or notified by the university on June 28th? that an employee mowing the grass hit the gas line that morning? No. Were you in New Richmond when the city of Murray came to replace the gas regulator? I am not entirely sure because I don't know when they replaced it. Um, news says they've done this during like certain times that morning, but I was out and about all morning, so I have no idea if I was in the building when they replaced it or not. So they did not alert you in any way? No. If, if um, you mind until the news came out and said that's what happened with the regulator, I was in the dark. No idea what happened, no comment from the university, nothing. Have, did you speak to the painters that were in the building prior to the explosion? Uh, from time to time, because um, they'd be out taking a break out behind Richmond and I would be coming in and going. Um, they got used to seeing me being the only person in the building, but it wasn't really any like in-depth talk. It was just more quick elevator talk, how you doing, stuff like that. And they never mentioned smelling any gas in the building to you either? Not that I'm aware of. Is there anything else that you would like to add? Those are all my approved questions. <laughs> <laughs> That was a little weird doing an interview with no follow-up questions. Um, no, I guess what I'm not saying is just, again, be patient with everything that's going on. Um, I would really like to hear from the university and see what they're going to do with Richmond, just pure curiosity, because um, that's that was my home for the past year. Um, but that's really all I have left to add, so unless you have anything left to add. No. I don't know.